So, you want to travel Greece, you want to swim around in the blue ass water, you want to eat some gyros, well guess what, kind of an expert of the area, and it's actually pronounced Yido. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the 20 things that I learned while traveling through the Cyclades, the series of islands, as well as the mainland of Greece, from road tripping from all the way in Athens to Meteora, and then even into the countryside where not even the locals go. I got to know the country reasonably well as a traveler, and the things I'll share with you are the things I wish I could have found on YouTube before arriving. Things that'll help you save time and save money. These are mostly going to be focused on the Cyclades, the series of islands that makes Greece so famous. From Santorini, Mykonos, Milos, Paros, Crete, etc. So with that out of the way, we have 20 things to get through. Let's get started with the best time to go. The first thing you need to know about Greece is that there's an on-season and an off-season. The off-season is basically the cold months where nobody quite goes and travels unless you're from Greece. I'm not saying don't go, I'm just saying don't expect to lay by the beach. It's gonna be cold. The on season or the hot season is basically May all the way through to September. And in August, it's so hot that even the Greeks go on vacation because they can't handle the heat. You can expect the weather to be anywhere from like 26 to 35 degrees and sometimes even hotter. Now, because everybody travels Greece in the summer, it's also the reason why it gets expensive. So if you're a budget conscious traveler, one of the cool things you could try, especially if you love wearing a nice jacket, then go and experience Greece in the shoulder season, which is going to be like November to April. It's going to be chilly, 9 to 15 degrees, but it's going to save you a lot of money. One thing to know is that if you're in the islands, a lot of businesses tend to shut down and only run during the summer months. The next point is, how do you get around when you're here in the Greek islands? Well, there's three main ways. There's renting a car, renting a scooter, or renting an ATV. Now, the reason I say there's three is because if you rely on taxis, you're going to go broke. It's so expensive. On Uber, I saw 35 euros to go five minutes. So if you're going from place to place, really getting to know the islands like you should, should, you're gonna spend more money on your transportation than you will on your hotel and the hotels are already expensive enough as for public transportation forget about it I've seen a few big buses but I would not want to rely on them to get around because they're only gonna take you to the most touristy and traveled places and here on this channel we're about getting lost we're about getting to know the real side of these islands and of this country so the only solution is have your own vehicle the next up are the foods you must try moussaka shrimp saganaki of course the meze platters like tzatziki and hummus Suvlaki, Iro Paputsakia? It's like a stuffed eggplant. Pugatsa, one of the most amazing desserts. If you're in Milos, we loved the orange cake. And of course, one of the blessings Greece has brought to the world, the Fredo Espresso, which is literally just a cold coffee, but it has a nice hit to it. Greeks are on island time. If you want to have everything on time, go to Stuttgart. But hey, if you want blue ass water and you don't mind waiting for it, then go to Greece because everybody has a bit of a laid back mindset. During the midday sun, during the summer, there's what's known as a siesta where sometimes businesses will close, people will be moving especially slowly, your food will come out slow, your ferry's probably gonna be late, but just know if you go with the flow, you're gonna have an amazing time. So I've told you how busy it gets during the summer months and with millions of people visiting at one time, it can definitely help to book things in advance. Your ferries, your rental cars, your Airbnb, however you choose to do it, these things can book up and actually there was a time where we were supposed to leave Milos to take a ferry to Santorini and we actually got stranded in Milos for an extra day, which turned out to be awesome. But that's because the ferry was oversold and they had no seats left. So yeah, doing things last minute will either mean you're missing out on opportunities or you're paying a lot more for them. Tipping. It's something we do in Canada and America and assume the rest of the world does, but truthfully, that's not the case. And Greece is not one of those places where tipping is actually part of the culture. As a good rule of thumb, as a traveler, no matter where you go, I always like to leave at least 5-10%, but unless you're in a high-end business, it's not really expected. For the last eight years now, I've been traveling around this, but with it has come one really challenging part, and that is what it's done to my body. This right here is AG1, with 75 vitamins, minerals, and ingredients from whole source foods. This is gonna bring me a lot of the nutrition that I lack in my day to day. For the next few days, I'm gonna take this right before breakfast. Oh no. I'm the furthest thing from a chef, but luckily, I can follow instructions. <laughs> Seven days later, and here we are. I've been absolutely loving AG1. Now with any health product, it's always hard to differentiate what's causing what, but one thing I will say is these last few days, I've been feeling a lot of energy. I've been feeling awesome overall. And if there's anything that I've really enjoyed the most, it's just knowing with confidence that I'm now getting the greens. My diet often, if not always, is lacking. We'll have to see what 30 days does for me because it's definitely a part of my daily routine now. Now if you use the link down below to buy your first purchase of AG1, you'll also 
also be getting a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D as well as five travel packs. So go check it out. Now I'm gonna share with you some average costs so that you know what to budget for this trip. This can easily become one of those destinations where you overspend. It gets very expensive very fast. On average, a meal, whether it be lunch or dinner, is gonna run you around 20 to 35 euros per person. Yes, I did find a couple times where I could get away with anything around 10 to 12 euros, but usually that was quite exceptional and it was usually on the more fast food end of side of things. The price of car, ATV, or scooter rentals has already been shared, but one price you should definitely count in is getting from island to island. To go about an hour and a half from Milos to Santorini cost me around 85 euros per person. Flying would have been much more and actually involved flying back to Athens, Athens to Santorini. So it's not exactly streamlined, which is why a lot of people actually will go and opt into taking ferries. To go from Athens to Mykonos also cost me about 80 euros per person. But hey, this is the high season and maybe during other times, or maybe if I had booked well in advance, it would have been a lot cheaper. To get myself a SIM card with about six gigabytes of data cost me around 25 euros and if you're planning to do any shopping maybe just don't i don't think it's worth it air france lost my luggage so i didn't have much of choice when i arrived in mykonos which was probably the worst place to do the shopping a silly dress shirt that didn't even survive one wash cycle cost me 140 euros better to shop before you arrive and one expense that you just can't forget about is actually going to be fuel if you're renting a car you're easily going to be spending 20 to 30 dollars just in gas alone per day the gas on the islands and the whole world right now is incredible incredibly expensive. The next thing you should know is actually how to find out the ferry routes. There's two apps. There's Ferry Hopper and Ferry Scanner. Both of these websites will scan all the different companies that operate doing these travel routes. But what I actually recommend is not using them. After using the scanner website, I actually took the information and went directly to the ferry company's website, which in this case was CJet. And I saved about 20 euros per person booking it directly. Plus it also means I was able to reschedule things. And I highly doubt I would have had that same privilege if I had done it on the scanner websites. It's kind of become a rule of thumb in travel now. Don't use third parties. For all my digital nomad friends out there, take some time off. It's not the right time to work anymore. Once you arrive here, the internet blows. Look, I really loved my time in Greece, but sadly for me, the way the internet is right now, I just couldn't see myself spending more than two weeks. Even in Athens, the internet kept on failing me. I couldn't keep up with my team remotely, but if I was just posting my photos on Instagram, sure, it would be fine. But even with local Wi-Fi not being reliable or fast, the SIM cards were actually just as bad. There was a lot of dead spots all the way through the country, especially in the islands. Trigger warning, Mykonos and Santorini are not the real Greece. Locals kept telling me this, I didn't quite understand it until I went. Especially in Santorini, it is inescapable to have moments where you feel like a tourist in a gift shop. If you're walking through Ia, you're basically walking through a giant shopping center. One of the most beautiful in the world, no doubt, but nonetheless, it definitely loses a bit of its authenticity when you realize that behind the view is a hundred people trying to sell you stuff. Now don't get me wrong, these kingpin destinations of the Greek Cyclades have have their own claims to fame, Santorini, probably one of the most stunning places on our planet. Mykonos, one of the greatest places to party. But with that, it's super important to know what do you want from this trip. For me, I love getting to know how the locals live. I love getting lost. And that leads me to my next point, which is to embrace the lesser known sides of Greece. Now, there's certain countries in this world where getting lost, going off the beaten path might seem a little bit intimidating. You're not quite sure what it's gonna be like. Are the locals gonna speak your language? Is it safe? And for Greece, the answer is is yes, you're going to have an amazing time even if you rent a car and go into the middle of nowhere. The people are sweet, the food continues to be delicious even outside of the touristy areas. It's just part of the Greek culture. And the crazy thing about Greece is that even their hidden gems are more beautiful than most countries' postcards. Like this place here. This beach is not very mainstream for international travelers and yet we've never heard of it. For any other country, this would be front page, but this is Greece. They have dozens if not hundreds of places that rival this beauty. All that to say, don't be afraid to go out there and truly experience the real Greece. The next up is to have cash on you. Yeah, definitely your credit card will go a long way, but this is a country that has actually gone through recessions, through moments where the country almost went bankrupt, and you have to imagine that people are a little bit untrusting of the money they can't hold. So keep some euros on you and just know that a lot of small businesses will definitely prefer it, if not only exclusively accept cash. And that kind of leads me to my next point. The currency is the euro, if you didn't know. Okay, this 
one's very, very important because it could totally change your trip's experience. And that is that you should have an international driver's license. You see, Ruby went to Greece about four or five years ago. And when she went, she didn't have an international driver's license. And so her American drivers wouldn't be accepted. She ended up having to take taxis everywhere, which costed hundreds of dollars. Now today, they were telling us that they've actually started accepting international driver's license from America, but a whole lot of other countries are not accepted. And you're gonna cost yourself so much money, you're gonna be in shock, and you're probably not gonna be able to travel for the next two decades if you don't get this in order. So make sure you don't arrive in Santorini, Mykonos, or wherever your travels take you, only to realize you can't even rent a vehicle. With that said, my driver's license was accepted in one place and actually not accepted in another, so maybe you could hunt around and try to find a spot, but that's also not how you want to spend your trip. So international driver's license will actually cover you for travel across the world, at least most destinations, so it could be a worthwhile investment. As in all countries you visit, it never hurts to know a few words from the local language. And that's why I'm here, a qualified Greek instructor. Today, I'm going to teach you hello, which is Yasu. Thank you. Evcharisto. Please. Parakalo. Gyro. Apparently, Yiro. Now this is a big tip, bring a mask. If you're leaving your home country, it's a good time to order one to your house, but there were so many of these beautiful beaches with the clearest of water, and all I could think was, I wish I could see beneath it. But instead, I ended up buying some really bad ones over in the islands that cost me way more than they should have. And although I was just talking about a dive mask, but now let's talk about the other one. Currently, the situation is very lax, actually. Most people don't wear it, doesn't seem like you need to wear it really anywhere. So that's the situation. By the time you travel, it might even be completely a thing of the past. Now, if you've not taken a single point that I've said so far, here's the one that you should really listen to. If you want to get the best out of these busy Greek destinations, whether it be Sarakaniko in Milos, whether it be Ia in Santorini, if you go during midday or especially during sunset, this is what you might be getting. I don't know about you, but that's the last thing I want when I spent thousands of dollars to come all the way here. But luckily, there's a very easy solution unless you went out the night before, and that is to get up for sunrise. I was shocked. Seeing how busy it was for sunset, I thought that at least a quarter or a fifth of these people would get up early but turns out there was like 12 people who were willing to wake up early to get the best out of this island so sunrise is going to be the time to shoot to explore and to enjoy a very real serene moment with some of the most breathtaking views on this planet the next thing you should know is this is the outlet they use it's like the double circle one now how long should you stay in Greece well that's something that depends on your budget and of course what you want to see but to really get a feel for the Greek islands I would say you probably want to experience at least two, maybe three of them. And with that, I wouldn't recommend doing less than three nights per island. For my limited time in Athens, it seemed like a pretty cool city that I actually would have loved to spend a bit more time in. And of course, my road trip was unforgettable, but it depends what you want from your trip. What I'll say is that 10 to 14 days is going to set you up with an extremely memorable trip here in Greece, and it's going to send you home with a lot less in your wallet. And lastly, number 20, this should be your next Euro destination. My goal here has been in this video to equip you with everything that you might need to know, the pros and the cons, but while I'm here to serve up even the harsh realities, please don't misinterpret that because I absolutely loved my time here in Greece. It's a country that's, yes, expensive. Yes, it comes with some challenges as a digital nomad, but it is so unworldly stunning. There's nothing else quite like it. The food is so delicious. I am two weeks later still thinking about the food I was eating, and I only just scratched the surface of what these islands have to offer. Milos in particular for me was a gem, and I know that someday I'll be going back, hopefully taking my parents. Now, if you want to take your planning one step further, I've got my entire Greek playlist linked down below. And while this video was very informational, I have a much more fun way of showing it to you so that you can actually visualize the beaches, the viewpoints, and all the amazing things you should see in Milos, Santorini, Mykonos, and on our incredible road trip through the mainland. So definitely go check that out. And guys, my name is Christian. This is the Lost LeBlanc channel. And hit that subscribe button if you want to see more because there's a ton more to come. Let's get lost again in the next one.